Hey guys, Sandesh here from Beanstack and welcome to our third monthly build video where we show you PC parts list with a specific budget and with a specific purpose in mind. For December 2016, we're looking at a budget of 60,000 rupees for a complete 1080p gaming setup. This includes not just a PC, but a monitor, keyboard, mouse and headset. In 60,000 rupees, you'll be able to ascend past the console peasant race and join your brethren on the glorious side. This means you'll be able to play all of today's titles at high, very high or ultra settings at 1080p in the 45 to 60 frames per second range. The final price comes in at 58,094 and here's a quick look at the parts list. There's a link to this parts list on PC Part Picker as well as links to all of the components mentioned in the description. So make sure you check that out down below. First, the PC. Let's start with the heart of the build. The graphics card of choice is the Galax GTX 1060. This is the 3GB variant available for 16,700 rupees from Prime ABGB. In the 10,000 to 20,000 rupees price bracket, the 1060 is the king of the hill. And the performance difference between the 3GB variant and the 6GB variant is not much at all. According to Eurogamer, it falls in the 5% range for most games, except for Hitman, where the performance difference is in the 10% range. At 1080p, the 1060 is a fantastic fantastic bang for the buck card and if you're interested in knowing more about how it performs against the 1070 and 1080, check out our video and find out just how much performance you're getting for your hard earned rupees. For the CPU, we're going with the trusted Intel Core i3-6100, a dual core Skylake processor with a base frequency of 3.7 GHz. 4 threads from hyperthreading but no turbo boost. The i3 should pack enough performance to not bottleneck the 1060 and unless you have around double the budget for the cheapest available i5, the i3 is a great partner to the 1060. You can pick it up for around 8500 rupees from MD computers. For RAM, we're going with 8GB of Corsair Value Select DDR4 2133 MHz speed RAM, which you can also pick up from MD computers for around 3500 rupees. Usually we go with Kingston HyperX Fury for our builds, but I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, the price of HyperX RAM has shot up nearly 50% to 4,300 on all websites. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening here, but if there's someone who does know, maybe let us know what's exactly happening in the comments below. Anyway, in 2016, you cannot have a build without crazy fast boot times. And to get that sorted, we have put in 120 GB of Samsung 750 EVO SSD for the OS and applications. There are cheaper options available like Lighton, Zotac and Kingston's UV400, but the 750 EVO SSD has much better write speeds. If you have a few more hundred rupees to spare, you can get the 850 EVO variant for 120 GB of slightly better performance. As for your games and media, we'll be putting all of that in a 1 TB Western Digital Digital Caviar Blue Drive, 7200 RPM of very trusted and reliable storage. You can pick this up for around 3600 rupees from most retailers. For the motherboard, we're going with the ASRock H110M Micro ATX motherboard, available for 4500 rupees from Prime ABGB. Uh, comes with four USB 3.0 ports and two USB 2.0 ports, 7.1 channel audio. It's a no-frills motherboard and for what we're building, it'll do the job well. For the power supply, we're going with the 430 watt unit from Corsair, the CX430. Now this is not the best option and I agree with that. I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. Power supply options in India are stupid limited. If you're building a system that requires 550 watts to 600 watts of power, then you'll be covered well. But beneath that, the options available are some of the worst reviewed power supplies out there. When coming to this build, we had to choose between the CX430 and the VS450. And even though it's not saying much, the CX430 is the better option overall. You can pick this up for about 3000 rupees from MD computers. Rounding up the PC side of this setup, the case I chose for this build is the Corsair Carbide 100R. It's a very simple yet I think great looking entry level case available for around 3300 rupees from MD computers. There are two versions, a silent edition that has no windowed side panel but comes with a built in fan controller and a second version that just has the windowed side panel. The one I chose here is the windowed version, it comes with two USB 3.0 ports on the front, a two-list drive cage, space for routing your cables on one side and a windowed side panel like I mentioned on the other side and one 120mm fan pre-installed. And by the way, this is just my recommendation since I prefer builds this way, you can always go for something flashier like the Thermaltake Versa N21 to really show off your build. 
And finally, to make sure we're getting enough cooling, since the graphics card is not a blower style one, I've added one circle 120mm blue LED fan for 400 rupees. The ASUS motherboard has only one case fan connector, so you will need a fan splitter to connect both these fans to the motherboard. Unfortunately, the one I've selected here doesn't come in anything less than a 5-pack of connectors that's available for 315 rupees. So if you have a computer store around, consider going there and just picking one uh, fan splitter for around 50 to 60 rupees instead. Now for the rest of the setup, the monitor for this build is the VS228DE from ASUS, available for 7400 rupees from Prime AVGB. It's full HD, that's 1920 by 1080 in resolution and 60 hertz, and the display size is 21.5 inches, a good size if you're going to be sitting up close. Like the 100R case, it's got a matte black finish, the stand lets you tilt the monitor up 20 degrees and down 5 degrees and it's got a 100 by 100 waist amount so you can mount it on your wall or to a monitor stand to adjust it more to your needs. For input, there is only one VGA port and unfortunately Nvidia has removed VGA from its Pascal lineup so you will need to buy a DVI to VGA adapter. Fortunately, these things cost like 100 to 200 rupees so it'll hardly disturb your budget. From reviews, color accuracy of the monitor out of the box is fantastic and it is a value monitor for your gaming needs. For the last three parts, I thought I'd spice things up a little, so we're going full into LED lighting for the keyboard, mouse, and headset. The Dragon War GKM001 keyboard and mouse combo is how you'll be doing your clicking and typing. Both beautifully lit LED units, the mouse has five buttons and you can adjust its sensitivity on the go. You can switch between 800, 1600, 2400, and 3200 DPI. The keyboard is supposed to be semi-mechanical and you get three backlighting colors, red, blue, and purple. You can adjust its brightness and you also get breathing mode. What's also really cool is that the logos next to the keys light up. Some might call it gaudy but for me it reminds me of a time when things were all out there and wacky. The cables on both are braided too and I think overall for a price of 2200 rupees you're getting a great set. Finally to complete our setup and the LED lighting spice, the headset of choice is the Koshin Each G2000 over the year headset available for 1200 rupees from Amazon. The headset sounds good with ample padding on both the headband and the ear cups. It's very edgy in its look and it comes with a built-in mic that both reviewers trusted and on Amazon have called decent enough to play with and you get all that blue LED lighting around the cans. If anything else, this should make you the ballin' awesome blossom gamer you want to be. Alright guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next or any suggestions you might have for this build. Subscribe for more awesome tech content and we'll see you in the next one.